y'all. I am Jamie Doris and you're watching Miss Congeniality TV. Have you always wanted to be a beauty queen? Or maybe you couldn't care less about that crown and simply want to look your best. Regardless of why you are here, welcome. In the last episode, we traveled to Florida to meet the elite Mrs. Queen of the World, Katrina Spagnoletti. We strutted all around her gorgeous Tampa home and talked about aging, pageantry, and walking like a queen. Then we learned the ins and outs of all of the official pageant walks with pageant coach Pamela Nail. In this episode of Miss Congeniality, we're getting our picture taken. Headshots, lifestyle photos, and online social media posting are all part of the Beauty Queen marketing routine. Today we meet with the headshot photographer Brandy Stage in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi and work through all of the process of getting great headshots. Getting the wrong wardrobe, not having professional hair and makeup is where it's gonna go wrong. Then we travel up to the small town of Philadelphia, Mississippi to dredge up one of the biggest lifestyle photographers in the Southeast. Gamble Martin. Um, yeah, I tell most of my clients literally if you're not sore tomorrow, you did not do it right and your picture is going to be tragic. In order to look like a beauty queen, you're going to need photos of you, well, looking like a beauty queen. But that's not always as simple as just grabbing the nearest, cheapest photographer in your area. I've learned that when it comes to great photos, it's really contingent upon you knowing what you want and how to get it. You cannot expect a photographer to do all the heavy lifting. Modeling is hard. It takes a lot of brain power. There's a lot to think about. So in today's episode, we're going to learn a lot of tips so that you can elevate your next photo shoot and maybe become a social media queen to boot. Let's start now with headshots. Hi, I'm Brandy Stage with Brandy Stage Portraiture, and I'm a professional photographer, and today we're going to be doing Jamie's Headshots. Brandy, thank you so much for having me in your studio for the umpteenth time. I'm so excited to have you here. Look at you. You dressed for a Miss Congeniality I did. interview. I dressed for you. Mm -hmm. I had to. We had to be fabulous together. So when a girl wants or a guy wants some headshots, what is it that they need to do to prepare mm -hmm. to get started for a headshot session? Well, number one is self-care. First of all, you don't. if you are coloring your hair, you do not want any roots showing. And as obvious as that sounds, you know, we need to make sure that we say that to clients. And then the other thing is nails. So if your nails are going to be showing, you want them to look clean. They, you don't want to go wild unless that's your thing, but a natural look on the nails. For men, they need to be groomed. Now, if you want to take it further, which I, I love, but not everyone has the time. So making sure good skin care is already in place. You want to make sure you get a good night's sleep, plenty of water, eat well so your skin looks great and come relaxed. I have a lot of people will come nervous and there's no reason <laughs> to come nervous. We're going to have so much fun. So that's, that is my, my main tips. I even want one up here. So maybe here. Yes. Chin up. Yes. Good. What about clothing? Mm -hmm. Form fitted with me is number one. Where blousey pieces may look great in public, they do not look great in the type of photography I do. I like to show the form and it slims down women and also for men too. And most people don't mm -hmm. think that. Mm -hmm. They think I want to cover everything up and right. I want it to be billowy. Yeah, I want to hide everything, but that makes you look larger than you are in photography, the way I shoot. Woo! <laughs> what about for pageant girls? What should they bring for a pageant headshot shoot? Okay, so what I suggest is number one, you need your interview outfit. I always like to include that, uh, something a little more professional. But I always want the gowns also. I wanna, I wanna see you in this. I wanna, do, I wanna do the crown in this. And I love how flowy this is also. We can really move and play with that. So let's do this next. Let's do it. Okay. okay. More shoulder. Perfect. Hair and makeup for mm. a headshot photography session, mm -hmm. what are your recommendations? It's gonna be pageant makeup, pageant hair. Now, would you suggest they do the hair and makeup themselves or get a professional? Professional. 
because you need to be camera ready. You can't just do your own makeup every day and it look the same. So we want to take our clients up at least a notch, maybe two or three. And you know what, something a lot of people think that everything can be fixed in the editing. I think that you need to get it as right as you can in camera. That's always ideal. Rather get the expression, the look, the whole picture. And if I have to take hair out a little bit, I didn't fluff it enough, I don't mind that whatsoever. But getting it just right in camera is key. What do most people get wrong when it comes to doing headshots? Getting the wrong wardrobe, not having professional hair and makeup is where it's going to go wrong. After the break, it's time to talk angles. There are about nine angles of a face in photography that is really beautiful. So I think, I think that's good for this outfit. So let's do, let's do your interview suit. All right, let's talk angles. Is there mm -hmm. a flattering angle for every woman? No. Really? There are about nine angles of a face in photography that is really beautiful, but not all nine of those are going to work for every woman. So I'm looking for that in a woman. Um, typically, you know from being photographed which angle you like to be photographed from. So I'll, I'll talk to clients about that too, and I'm also playing and looking. But a big tip is always sticking the neck out and down to the camera and or the camera's here and the neck is going to go out and down that's really important because that elongates the neck in a camera so video is different um, because you're getting all these angles and it's not going to look flattering from all angle but from the camera perspective when you're doing that it'll elongate the neck it's really really lovely out and down, and, down. Mm -hmm. and some shoulder probably yes one trick that I learned was to, um, like you said, the nine different angles mm -hmm. that you can really shoot a face from. Mm -hmm. I had a um, somebody tell me to take my own picture, like selfie, in mm -hmm. all of those different nine really? like That's variations, smart. and then look at them to mm -hmm. see what, not what looked good in the mirror, but what looked good on camera. And it was really surprising. Mm -hmm. I discovered this is one of my best angles. Yes. That. Yes. I love that one on you. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend that people do that? Kind of come in knowing what their angles are? Um, if they're pageant girl, yes, you need to know that. Mm -hmm. Now on this one, what we want to do is I want your elbow back because I want to see a little space right here. So come forward. Good. What makes a great headshot? Expression. And that's what I'm always working towards is expression because depending on your industry, will determine what you're trying to portray to your prospective clients and the community. So um, you want to make sure that it's being expressed through expression. So I'm looking at different options for clients. Do we want to be strong and bold and confident? Do we want to be softer? Do we want to be magnetic? Do we want to, you know, all these different things that we're trying to convey will determine to me how to photograph someone. Does that make sense? So what does a pageant girl want to look like? Beautiful, radiant, strong, confident. That's what it's all about. I'm always shooting for that. The most beautiful image, the most beautiful expression. It's all about beauty with pageant all about it. So it's going to be the angle, it's going to be the pose, it's going to be what we do with the eyes and the mouth. I like to play and I, I'm looking for the sweet spot and I know it when I see it. So I will, that's something we do in the shoot actually. Yeah. To me, your photos are so iconic. I can spot them from anywhere. Thank anywhere. You. I could be like, that's Thank a brandy you. stage right Thank there. You. What separates you from other photographers? Style and experience. I, I think that's the bottom line. I, um, everybody has a different style, and that's what makes you you as a photographer. And that's why you're chosen from your clients for that look. Um, and then I, beyond that is definitely the experience. I love to love on my clients when they come in and just pour into them, just love and support and encouragement, and just make them radiate and then capture it and it's just fabulous and I love it. It's a dream job. It's a dream job.
And that's why your, your photos are so good. Thank you. And that is what you're looking for when you're looking for a headshot photographer. Somebody who makes you feel better when you walk in the door so that it comes across on camera. Oh, thank you. Up next, the do's and don'ts of lifestyle photos. <laughs> and then screen shag carpet, and you're like, this is gonna be great. Headshots are just one type of photo that you need in your beauty queen portfolio. Lifestyle photos are another. Lifestyle photos are where you're wearing more casual clothes and doing regular daily activities. So we have traveled to this quaint little town of Philadelphia, Mississippi to bring you the best lifestyle photographer, I kid you not, in the American Southeast. Her name is Gamble Martin. Come on. Hello. To the tea room. Hey, Gamble. Hey. Hey. Oh my God, I am so happy to be here. I'm glad you're here. This is beautiful in here. Thank you. What is this exactly? It is a beauty bar. A it's beauty bar. A beauty bar. It started out as a place to shoot some natural light photos, but it ended up being a beauty bar. So now we're a full salon. So. Okay, on my show, the whole point really is to give um, women that are interested in becoming a beauty queen, or at least mm -hmm. looking like they're a beauty queen, the information they need. Okay. So if they are looking to do lifestyle photos, how, how does a woman even get started doing it? What's the process? Um, for a lifestyle photo, I think you first have to think about the message that you're going to want to convey. Like, is it part of your personality that you want to push out and let people see? You need to think about your environment, where you want to set it up at. Are you going to go on location somewhere, like out of town? Is it something you want to do in your business? Is it something you want to do in your home? Is it something you want to do in town where you live? You need to think about your environment. You need to think about what you're going to wear. Um, also think about, you know, who's going to shoot it. But I think most of it's like putting together the environment, the outfit, and what message you're trying to relay. But what are some things that people should do in like a lifestyle photo? So you could do candy shops, you could do coffee shops, you could do bike riding, you could do balloons. I mean, you could do, you know, and that's simple, walk down a sidewalk with balloons. You can't get much easier than that. Um, you could go into a hotel that has a beautiful lobby and do a whole shoot there. You could do, there's all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's just whatever, whatever you like. You could do roller skating. You did roller skating the other day. It was super cute. But I didn't really roller skate. Well, it still looked like you did. That's all that matters. <laughs> it's staging. <laughs> That's what lifestyle photography is. Ah. It's really staging. It really is. I love that you just said that because I think... And that's okay. It's okay it is okay. it's not real. I mean, you're because you have to put a lot of thought into that because if you have a bunch of stuff in the background or it, you're not conveying the right message and it gets confusing to the eye. So it, it is staging. I, I, I agree with you. I feel like but you've got to stage it so that you can capture it. Yeah, for it to look good. Yeah. Because that's the whole point. It's to look good. I mean, you cannot stage it and look terrible, but you want it to look good. I mean, you want to display your best self in the best scene that you can. That's what it is. And then I'm going to move the plant. We're moving the tissue too. Yeah, we're going to move the tissue. Okay. No tears, no tears in the tea room. So this is part of the whole staging thing. Yes. It's like staging. it's not bad to stage your right. area. Yeah. It just makes it cleaner. It's just a few little things to help clean stuff up. It does make a big difference. Okay. How does somebody choose a location? Well, you could either pick a location that you love or you could pick an outfit that you love. Oh. So if you already have an outfit, let's say like you've already done a pageant and you have a gown that you really love, you've invested a whole lot of money in it, and so you're like, I need to use this again, then you would take that gown as your starting point and then look for locations that are going to display that the best. Oh. So it depends on how you want to flip that. Okay, so we're going to do the peach outfit in here because we've got kind of browns and oranges and blacks and whites, which is kind of in that color palette. I may move some of these chairs just so I can shoot you a little better. What about when, if somebody wants to shoot in their house? What are some things they, that they should think about? Oh gosh, that's a tough one. Um, most of my clients don't have homes that are conducive for that. Mm. Because the best, when you see the inspiration images, they have white walls and white bedding and white carpet and a white dog. And, <laughs> and you know, everything's like so well lit, but then you know, you have a client call and it's like, <laughs> they've got, got brown carpet. <laughs> And then screen shag carpet, and you're like, this is gonna be great. You know, so, yeah, you're like, God. But usually it has to have someone who did their home and decorated their home with that kind of thing in mind. Okay. And finally, on Miss Congeniality, we boil the tips down to the top three. So the only thing you're gonna think you have to think about is what are you wearing, what's in the background, and sliding. 
Talk, let's talk about wardrobe for okay. lifestyle photos. Uh, I think the most important thing, if, regardless of your budget, is fit. I would always say that a lot of people, no matter what your body type is, I love it when it fits in the waist. Because no matter whether you're wafy thin or you're a beautiful curvy girl, it needs to fit in the waist to show those curves. I mean, curves are beautiful. And so I think it needs to be fitted in the waist, even if it flares out at the bottom or if it's poofy at the top, if it fits the waist, it's always gonna photograph better. All right, why don't we go downtown and shoot some more of you in this outfit? Okay, sounds All right, great. Sounds good. Usually solids work the best, but not always. Sometimes patterns can be super, super fun. And layers are really beautiful. I like textures and layers. It creates a little more visual interest um, depending on your background. If your background's really busy, you may not need it as much, but if you don't have a whole lot going on in your background, like if it's more just all blurred and kind of blown out, then you want like, you know, puffs or ruffles or, you know, sweaters or jackets or, or a scarf or different things to add texture and interest to it. So like when I go out on a shoot, I basically tell people, try to go full range from super casual, your favorite cutoffs and your favorite graphic t-shirt or a tank or whatever that vibe is for you, all the way to formal. That way you've got something for everything. So you could do everything from shorts and a t-shirt to a cocktail dress, to pantsuit or jumpsuit, and then go formal. Um, and also tell people if they like movement, also say do something flowy. Which by the way, we are out at the Neshoba County Fairgrounds. Never been here my entire life. I am mesmerized. Okay, let's take pictures. <laughs> Yeah, you have to experience it. Um, all right, so I'd probably like maybe cross over. This would be perfect for like putting your thumbs and your belt loops or something because that's kind of the vibe out here. So finally, posing. What are the best body positions that people can get themselves into for that? Most people really don't know. Uh, and I think that's why it's good to work with somebody who, who can manipulate your body and, and show you what looks good. But most of the time, people, you know, never stand straight onto the camera, almost always twist a part of your body. I always, always use the lower half of my body to the side and always twist the upper part. That way you're still facing someone, but this part is visually smaller than this way. So always twist things and I like S curves. I like everything to be kind of bent, legs long instead of just feet like this. You know, always do your legs long. I always do the one cheek method too. Never sit on both butt cheeks, it never looks good. I always sit on one butt cheek. If you sit on both, it's not as flattering. I always sit on one butt cheek. <laughs> it's the one cheek method. So you're always like this, or you're like this. Yeah, but never like, you know. Flat. Yeah, so. Um, Basically, if you're comfortable, it doesn't look good. Yeah, if it hurts, you may, it knows you, you look great. Um, yeah, I tell most of my clients, literally, if you're not sore tomorrow, you did not do it right and your picture is gonna be tragic. Oh my God, that's adorable. See, it's always better. Like the worse you feel when you're doing it, the better it looks. Yeah, we were both in pain. So that means she looks amazing. <laughs> it's more than just you hurting. I'm hurting too now. But um, also hands away from the body. A lot away of Away from the body? Like usually I always, always tell somebody to put their elbow behind them because if my arms are by my side, I'm this wide. But if I bring this elbow back, I'm automatically smaller. And if I bend this elbow, then I'm from here to here. That's cute. That's really pretty. I'm going to get low again. And get okay. So the only thing you're gonna think, you have to think about is what are you wearing, what's in the background, and yes. lighting. Yes, lighting. Okay, lighting's so important. What's the best time of day to, to shoot? Depends on if you're inside or outside. Um, if you're outside, then I normally typically start my shoots at sunrise. <laughs> so that sometimes means hair and makeup at four. But so yeah, sunrise is the best lighting. It's when everything's the most even and then sunset is usually good. Now, if you live in a large city where there's lots of taller buildings, you have the luxury of being able to shoot all day long because chances are they're gonna throw shade. So you can shoot in between large buildings at noon. Whereas, you know, in, a, in our town, we don't have buildings that tall. So we, oh, no, mm -mm. but if you're inside, like right now, it's probably what, three or four. So depends on your window light again. Yeah, it's if nice you, and bright find, in here. Now, if you find a hotel that you're wanting to do it in, or a business or a lobby, the best thing to do is go scout that area out different times of the day and see when it's lit up the best, because it could be 10 a.m. based yeah. on when the windows, like which way they're facing. Yeah. So some areas are actually 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. and then some might be five. So it just depends on how the building is facing. So that's something you'd want to do your homework and scout that out and make a world of difference. Yeah, that's really, really cute. I'm an angel you on the an beach angel. You're such an at Neshoba County Fair. Let me do a couple more shots. You can just make anything up. Yeah, you can. You just need the right backdrop. You can. You can bring these with you to sign when you come back next year. <laughs>
Okay, so how d does someone <laughs> go about getting or finding a lifestyle photographer for themselves if they can't find you or get you? Um, pretty much if you're gonna if you're doing an on location shoot, I think a lot of times nowadays it's great because you're traveling. Like I know when I go to Nashville, if I go to New Orleans, they have people there that do that. Like you can book it on Airbnb, and they're usually extremely reasonable. There's a great lady um, that I use in New Orleans that shoots mine when I go for me and for my lighting assistant. There's an awesome girl in Nashville. So you can go and, and they don't charge that much. And they take you to all the hot spots because they know all of the Instagram, you know, hot spots and the places that everybody loves and that automatically look great. So they literally will take you out for an hour and do all kind of stuff all over the city for like a really reduced price. And they're 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 beautiful images and they're great for your social media. So and you, you can find this on Airbnb. Airbnb. You go to experiences. All right, so twist, like when you're doing that, twist this way a little more. Yes, ma'am. There you go. That gets that S curve back. Right, relax the shoulder on this side. And then look off that way. Gorgeous. Boom. That's your waist. And your, yeah, your waist is like half the size it looks like in the camera. All right, y'all, that's all the time we have left for today. I hope you enjoyed this photography episode of Miss Congeniality, The Making of a Beauty Queen. Coming up next week, we're diving deep into the secret world of tips, tricks, gadgets, and gizmos that beauty queens use. Some of these tools are downright weird. You won't want to miss this. Remember to love yourself, be yourself, and let's make this world a more beautiful place. Until next time, I am Miss Congeniality.